intro. Welcome back, everybody. This is part two of our little part design introduction. What I wanted to show you right off the bat, I want to get back to where we were before working on our little cube, making it into a die, but I want to show you this this new search interface right here. So first off, when you start up 3D Experience, I think you should probably just get in the habit of let this thing start and then close this right away. V5 used to do this also. It would always open up in a product, but then you could go into your environmental variables on your computer and you could say, um, what was it? No document start or something like that. And you could get rid of it. I haven't yet figured out how to stop it from opening. A, a new part. It's probably in there somewhere under the setting. So we just say no to that. So we're back at the plain gray background. So what you want to do, what we want to do is open up our part that we were working on. So we could very much, we could come, come up here and go to manage and then we could go find our part. So if you recall, let me just show you. You go here, it's going to open up the website that you probably already have open up because you had to have that to get to here anyways, right? Uh, and then you get into your collaborative space, which in here is the part design tutorial. So we double click on this and then there is our die and then you check the box and then you come over here and then you find it, uh, uh, the, the, the program that you want to open it with our, in our case would be part design. I click on it and then that part would open. Okay. So I'm not going to do it that way. I know that it's called die and you can see I've already searched for it. So you go here and you type die and what it will do is it'll find anything kind of sort of, you know, um, named that in your collaborative spaces. So here's our die right there. Now, the part that could be problematic here is if you don't know for sure what the thing is named, you might find one that looks like it because you think, you know, you did a search for what you thought the name was and sure enough, there was one named that, but it might be a revision off or something like that. So you can do this, but just make sure you know which one's which. So um, you can click it, you can, you can say, uh, you know, um, open, right? So we could just straight go here and do this, but I wanted to show you this other section. There's a myriad of different things you could do here, right? So you could double click it and over and manage, I, I, I showed this before, if you double click it on the website, you'll get a preview. And this is kind of the same thing, but this is in 3D experience on your desktop, but it's just a viewer. Now this, thing we're looking at, this Anovia product finder, it's a very, uh, instead of having like a product or a, a tree of sorts of, of Anovia, we're seeing things in kind of a three-dimensional view on these turntables. Uh, sometimes you'll see this turntable um, not be larger, but you might have more turntables, bigger turntables. You might have like a whole car sitting on this turntable, then over on a different turntable could see, be some people. Uh, check YouTube out there somewhere. There, There's Dassault Systems introductory videos to 3D experience and they show this. And the idea is that it's supposed to be a visual collaborative interface. So if I didn't want to work on this assembly, let's say this is a car, I could roll uh, all the turntables around, find the one with the little people on it, click it, and then I could go find Bob and say, hey Bob, let's go talk about that thing. And then you could get to him. Theoretically, you know, I guess there's financial in here and a whole bunch of, you know, different things throughout your entire enterprise could be accessible through this. Right now, this is just our part, okay? So what you do from here is then you just click open and it should open with whatever, um, I haven't tested this out, but I'm suspecting it's whatever type of part design workbench you use to make this in or possibly the last one that you're working in. So you hit open and, and what's gonna happen actually is it's gonna open up another tab and this one will still be here. So if you don't care about it, just go ahead and get rid of it, okay? Now, I'll close this and let me show you it again, but let's go the other pathway. And there's probably more pathways, but I just wanted to show you this. So you come here and then you could just <clears throat> say open. And there you go, okay? So I think that makes things quite a bit quicker than trying to find it through your collaborative space. But again, it's kind of bit me before because I had things that were named similarly. And well, for example, I was looking up dice because I thought I called it dice, but I called it die and I found one that was called dice, opened it up, it was the wrong one. Okay, so just make sure. Then to get back to business here, we have our cube, what we did last time, nothing special about this, but over in our tree, just to kind of look back at what happened, 
We did a pad over here, and the parent of that is a sketch. Down here, there's a fillet. There's nothing going on there other than the radius dimension. But if you come up here, we see that we have some relations. And these could be formulas that we wrote in sketch where we said that this constraint was equal to this other constraint. Or it could have something to do with our parameters here. Now, the parameters was the special feature that we made that we tied the shape of our cube. Uh, by the way, I'm kind of glad I noticed this because it's actually set at 1,000 still and need it to be 100. But we set this to where we could change the dimensions of the cube uh, real easily from the tree. And to, in order to do that, if you recall, we associated all of our various dimensions, be it in a sketch or in the pad or in the pocket or in a pattern. You can do it just about anywhere where there is a field that wants a value, you can associate to a parameter in the tree. And we got there by going to our tool section and then hitting this little FX formula icon right here, okay? So that's what we did last time. Today, along the same lines, we're going to do a very small amount of stuff, but a lot of information inside of it. We want to put one of the, uh, what, the die holes? Is that what we're gonna call this? You know, we're gonna make maybe a number one right here over on the side, but there's a lot of stuff we wanna talk about. And what I also decided to do in this these tutorials is not really, you know, stay completely entirely on the rail as far as what I want to do. Like, I don't want to say, today we're going to put a hole in the side of this cube. Well, I want to touch on all the stuff that would be important to do that along the way, even though it's seemingly tangential, it's the day-to-day -day life that's going to happen. So, for example, we're going to put the hole on the side, but in order to get it in the center, we need to find ways to calculate what that is from this edge to that edge to this edge, so we can utilize certain other features, namely this thing called a projection. We've got these other elements called construction elements that we're gonna utilize. This concept of links, so projections and other things are links to other things, and it just happens when you do certain things, but you need to be aware of it because it could cause you problems or not doing it could cause you problems. So you need to understand this. And that also has to do with what they call parent children in Katia. We can, we can, oh, I hate that window right there. You can come here and you can hit parent children and it will tell you what things are based upon what other features. And so it's very helpful to know this. And as you're building to understand what you're building upon, so you know that if you were to delete that or change that, how it's gonna modify the rest of your structure. But we'll also talk about other simple little things like, like what are the different view styles to help us out in this particular project, looking at our sketch tools a little bit more. And there is a, a big topic we're gonna to talk, talk about uh, for a very little bit, but it's the lingo word basically of geometrical constraints and dimensional constraints. I, I like the way that Dassault has stated this. They don't say this so much in Fusion 360 and Inventor, but I like the concept. So we'll talk about that later too. Okay, so let's let's get started. We'll just say over here on this face, on any face, but how about this face here? I want to make a sketch. I'm gonna collapse up fillet. I, I wanna see this stuff, but I don't care about the guts of the fillet there. So I come over here, I can pick this, and I can go right to my contextual menu and hit Sketcher, or Sketch to go into Sketcher. Uh, but I want to keep expressing that if you want to get there, you know, here it is down here on the toolbar. Either way, but just know kind of where it is if, I don't know, like the contextual menu goes away. I don't think that's going to happen. So we hit that, go in to, to Sketcher, and then we're going to draw a circle. So here's the deal. Here's, here's the first problem. I need to put this circle right in the center of this cube. Now you can notice it's snapping here, and that's that's a great thing that, that Katia does this. But that's, that's just down here, this is your vertical uh, axes. And so if I make a circle right here, sure enough, it's constrained. So we're gonna talk about this more, by the way, that these automatic constraints, things that will happen just automatically as you're working. Again, just like I said before about other stuff, it's, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. You have to understand it completely and be aware of it because you will find that if you're not paying attention, things will lock to things that you didn't want to have that happen and then you wonder how come your sketch is acting funny. Now in this case, I'm gonna get rid of it, but I just wanted to show you. You see we have a little circle right here. That means coincidence. So that means it's coincidental to 
this line right here. So it is an anchor, it is locked, you see? So if I try to go side to side, it won't let me go side to side, but it will let me go up and down. So that's, that's a nice thing. Now, if I wanna get rid of it, I can delete that constraint and um, it's often kind of difficult to get it. You know, it's such a little doohickey, you see, right there. And so I can pick it and now here's the thing that I wanna express about this. This is connected to this down here. It shows you, it shows you the connection and that's a really, really good thing. But even if you couldn't see that, what you could also do is if you get right over the top and you double click it, now it'll tell you that yes, it's a coincidence, but this is what's important. I hit the more button, move this out of the way. And then if I go to this sketch here and I open it up and I open up geometry, I, I don't have much. I got a circle with a point in the center of it, right? But I also have in this sketch, I have the, the, the concept of the sketch itself, the plane that's on and the horizontal vertical axes and origin as far as a point goes, right? So there's more stuff going on. If I click this point right there, it lights up here and it lights up over here in the tree and that tells me what it is. And then if I pick this right here, it says that's the thing over here that it's connected to. So if it was a line or an edge of a part or something else like that, it would show you that. Now this, probably seems useless or who cares, you know, right now at this moment, but try to remember that this is here because it does become very helpful later down the road. So I'm just gonna get rid of that for right now. And then that constraint, I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard and then I can just get rid of it and now it's not stuck to that line anymore and I'm free to move it around, okay? So back to what we're trying to do. I need to get that circle stuck in the center. I can get it stuck to the vertical axes, but I don't have any other line right here. If I would have made my cube perfectly square right in the center symmetrical, then this origin would be right in the middle. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe you would plan for that. And I do do that from time to time. Um, if, if I know that this is gonna be a deal. Another thing that I do from time to time is I actually will create myself a fake axis system. We can create a whole nother literal axis system in here if we want. But what I'll do is I'll just make a sketch or they have these things we haven't talked about yet called reference elements. That'll be a line straight up in this air, you know, like a Z axis one, another one going sideways. It's basically your three axes, but I'll put it wherever I need it to be and base my whole model around that. In this case, that's not done yet. So I gotta find another way to get this exactly, no guessing, and let's try to not measure the living crap out of things, right? Let's let's try to do this a little bit smarter. There's always other ways again, right? So here's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna go up here and what I would like to do, here's, here's my thought, right? Right off the top of my head, I go, I got an idea. If I could do a cross through the center here, I would have a little X and that would tell me where center is. So can we do that? Well, if I grab my line tool, let's bring this down and I move it around, it, it's not snapping to anything. Now, if you have snap to grid on, do not use that because that is not an anchor. Get rid of it. Go to the preferences. There's the other video we did on that. Get rid of snap to point because it's 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 no good for what we want to do. But I would like it to anchor right to that point right there, but I can't get a hold of it. Hmm, bummer. Well, I, I can make it do that. And that's the thing I was talking about, a projection. So a projection is pretty literally the projection of an edge from somewhere onto this plane, okay? So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna leave this sketch for a moment and I'm gonna do a thing to try to make it more explanatory. So I'm gonna get out of the sketch environment and I'm gonna jump ahead to, to something else. You, you, don't, you don't have to know exactly what the heck I'm doing, but see these down here? Points, lines, planes, and here's the axis system, by the way. Um, these are the reference elements. That's what they're called. They used to actually have a title bar once upon a time on them in V5. I hit the plane tool and I'm gonna make an offset plane. Remember this if you want, it's not, let's say part of this lesson, but I need it, it it's a means to an end. So the reference is gonna be this flat surface and it's gonna make a new plane, just like these planes in the middle that we used before, it's gonna make a new one offset from that face. And what I'm gonna do is make it like 100 away, okay? See, it's gonna be way out here. How about let's make it 200? Let's, let's go a little bit further out here. So it's way out here in space. So now I can get onto that plane and I can start drawing things. And that's, that's nice. So for example, if I go here and I draw a circle, this circle is now floating way out here. And maybe this is just a little bit of a preview of things to come. This is how you can 
get away from this origin center here. If you started doing any kind of CAD program and, and you heard that you had to work on planes, it pretty quickly seems restrictive because you're like, uh, what if I need to put something out here? Well, of course we could do that. And so we have a whole myriad of different types of planes that you can make, planes on angles, planes on lines, planes on you know tangent to surface through points, all, all tons of kinds of things, right? But this is what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna get rid of that sketch and just know that here is this plane in space above this cube. So I'm gonna take an element on this cube, like this edge right there, you see? And there's actually the menu that I wanted just popped out there. So you see this? This is projection, but you notice down here at the very bottom, see where my mouse is here, this is the same icon and there's a few more hiding. We're gonna project 3D elements. We can do the intersection, like if the solid body was going through this plane, we could get those, project silhouette edges for kind of round the shadows of things and so on and so forth. That'll be another lesson down the road somewhere, okay? This is the one you use typically. And if you look at the little icon closely, it's pretty much what we got going on. You got a little cube, you have a plane down here, you got a little line selected and it's going to project it forward to here. So see this line here? If I hit project 3D elements and hit okay, I wish I kind of did it sooner so you could see it, but I hit okay. And now that line is now projected here. Okay, it's blue because it's selected, but if I click on the background, it's yellow. So I want you to know that because that's the color of a projection, okay? So that's how you know. Now, if I go and grab this, I can't move it. When I go to try to wiggle things, you'll, you'll see me do this. I'll grab something and I'll try to wiggle it to see how locked it is, like I'll make a sketch. And uh, here's a different tool we haven't used before, the profile tool, it allows me to do all kinds of crazy things. And I wanna see how locked it is, so I could grab a line and try to wiggle it around and it's kind of wiggled but then I grab a point and then I try to wiggle it because just because you can't move a line doesn't mean you can't shrink the whole thing by grabbing a point so make sure you try to do both if you're trying to see how many degrees of freedom basically you have so this thing is firmly locked I can't I can't grab a point I can't move it and so this is the huge one of the big points about this video this is the a number one topic here is a projection and a link. So this is a copy of the line over on the cube, but it is tied to it. So it is a link. And if I change the size of this cube, this line will change size also. That could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. So make sure you know when it happens. I will refer back to this conversation as we do other things. Things like, for example, I could just say, constrain this edge of this circle, edge of the circle, <laughs> the edge of this square to say the edge of some feature over here, like 20 millimeters away from the side of this thing. You might not see it happen, but it just made a link. It made a projection to that edge. And then later when you change something and things follow or they break, it might be because of those things. All right. So that's, that's that, but I want to show you a couple more things on this. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that line. And then what I want to do is I want to get this whole face. So I'm going to pick this, the entire face of this is going to outline the edges. And then what I can do, let's go ahead and use the contextual menu. Now I'll click this and it just projects it right away up onto my sketch plane. And so that's, that's pretty nice, except, except in this particular instance, and probably in most instances, I would tell you never project the entire face. There's always, always exceptions to rules, but let me show you what's happening here. This projection is now one thing basically called the edge of that face, okay? If it was surface design, I might call it a boundary or something similar to that, you see? So if I pick any little bit of this, the whole thing highlights. If I try to get just that point, the whole thing highlights. So how could that be a problem? Okay, well, let's flatten this out. By the way, the normal view down here, the eyeball, you move it like this and now we're looking straight back down it again. So I go here and I make a rectangle and I say, that's, that's great. I'm gonna take this rectangle, put it right here. And what I would like to have happen is I need this edge right here to be so far away from this edge right there. So I go down to my constraints tool. I grab that <clears throat> and I pick this edge and then I pick that edge edge, hmm. pick it, and look what just happened, you see? It jumps over to the other side 
and now I have a constraint of zero. And if I try to make this 10, it goes 10 on the outside. That's super weird, right? So it definitely is not doing what I want it to. So this is this is no good. Now, if I wanted to, if I just wanted to, let's undo this. If I just wanted to extrude this, then that would be maybe the one time that I would say, go ahead and do this. Because if I wanted to exit out of here and pad that up, you bet, that works just fine. I could totally do this, okay? But that's not what I want. So I go ahead, well, I hit Control Z too many times, but that's okay, because I wanted to get rid of it anyways. Click on the background, click on the background. Uh, that's a topic, by the way, of, of today. I had it written down even in my notes. Make sure that before you do a thing, you always click on the background away somewhere. Not on the background on the part, but click on the background because remember that if I am selecting a thing and then I pick something down here, it will try to do that usually to that thing. So as a habit, especially in the beginning, click background. So here's what's going on. I'm gonna project those the, the, the edges, the same edges again, but now what you do is you click one and then I hold control down on the keyboard and then carefully pick the next edge and then pick the next edge and pick the next edge, right? So we do that and now we project it. And it seems to do the same thing, but because I picked the edges separately, each element is now separate as is the point right there. You see, right in there? So that allows me to do much more things with this if I need to. So again, the last situation here, if I wanted to make my, my rectangle in the center and I wanted to dimension it offset from the edge, I can pick from here to here no problem, 10 from the edge, 10 from the other edge, so on and so forth, okay? That's a big deal. Now let's talk about the next part of this. I'm gonna get rid of the, uh, the little rectangle. I'm gonna leave this one here as is. We're still floating out in space, so that, that's fine. Now, let's say that I do want to you know, offset something from this, or I have some some feature that I'm making inside here, and it becomes important, like this circle over here that we're gonna work with, I need it so far away from an edge, so far from here, or like I said before, we're gonna draw a line from corner to corner. Well, let's say I was done. Let's say that this was done, and I got this exactly where I want, it's all constrained up off the edges of this, and now I wanna pad it up, okay? So I exit out, and I go to pad, except, look, it's blue, right? Because it's selected. So what I just said, click on the background, and then I hit the pad icon, and the way Katia works, Fusion 360's got a little bit different thing going on, and I, I don't know if it's good or bad. I, I've, I've struggled with Fusion in a lot of ways that they have a lot of things about it that are very easy. It makes it very easy for new people to work with it, but it kind of goes right against the thing that I, I wanna say that you're not supposed to do. It, you're, it, you're being allowed to do something in bad form. But then other times I look at it and go, really? Is it really bad form? Well, be that as it may, here's how Katia does this. They say pick a profile. So I come over here and I go, I want that little circle. Wait, I want the circle. Wait, I want, nope, nope. When you pick a profile, you get the sketch. Almost always. There is a, a, a multi-pad thing that you can do where you can select different domains and it's kind of different. And I haven't even tried to find it here in, uh, no, that's a thin feature, in, in 3D Experience yet. We really don't use it. Uh, another reason is because, see, see what's happening here? See this? Now it padded it up with the hole in the center. That's totally not what we want to have happen. So as far as bad form goes, I guess, um, you, you don't make one kind of you know monolithic sketch that's got every feature in it and then you just pad this and then later you pad this and then you pad this and you pad this and that's kind of like what i'm talking about bad form and kind of easy button it doesn't really matter is it a big deal a whole bunch of people would say why are you even talking about that of course it, it, who cares it doesn't even matter but i was learned taught trained experience i'm not really sure which you know where is it bias i'm not sure but you make one sketch for each thing that you want, and based upon the way that Dassault uh, works with Katia, I apparently guess that they think the same way. So here's the problem, though. Here's the thing, though. That's the whole rant about how multiple sketches or multiple domains, if you will, profiles inside of a sketch work. 
But what we want to do in this case, we don't even care about padding the square later. We just, we don't even need it. I just want this circle. I just needed these lines to exist so I could measure off the edges to get this circle where I wanted it. So I'll go back, I'll go to the tree here, and I'll go back to the sketch. And this is where the next part of this story comes in, construction elements. So construction elements is this icon down here at the bottom. So they say construction slash standard. That's what the icon does. It makes it either a standard element or a construction element. So this item right here, right now, is a standard element, that line that I clicked on. It's also, also a projection, okay? People get this confused a lot because very frequently you project something and then turn it into a construction element. So often so that they start to believe that a projection and a construction element are the same thing. So let me, let me talk some more about this. So this right here, like I said, that is a standard element. This right here is also a standard element. This is a projection. This is not a projection. This is an isolated shape, okay? So what I can do is I could click on this line right there, and I could come down here and I could hit the toggle to toggle it to a construction element. And so if you can see that there, now I have a dashed yellow line. So this is a projection. It's also a construction element. This is a standard element and a projection. You see, you see where I'm going? So I could come over here to this, this circle and I could make it a construction element also and you can barely see it now. It's just, it's kind of gray hiding back there. But I can come back here, I pick it and I go back to the toggle, right? Pick it and now it's back to being a standard element again. You see? Let me show you another part here. If I get this right over here, yeah, I, I'm zooming in but you can't zoom into a point. I wanna show you that point right there. So that point, better yet, let me just show you a different point. I'll click out here. See that? See that little blue plus right there? Okay, that is a standard element point. So that's what a point looks like if it were a standard element like this sketch. If I click on the background, you can, yeah, you can see that there. It's, it's a little white plus sign, right? So I, I pick it and then I come down here and I hit the toggle to construction element and now it turns into just what we would call a point, a little dot. Right, and oh man, you can't hardly see that there. Okay, so there it is, you see? I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, but what I wanna draw your attention to is right here. You see that? That is not just the point at the end of the line, that's actually a point there. And if I come down here and I toggle it, look at this. This right here, if you look at the icon, I think they probably could have done a little bit better job than just outlining it. Um, it used to have kind of a color to it when it was pressed in. It tells me, so this is not just a button to do a thing, it's also informative. If I pick something, it tells me that that, sketch, that point is a construction element. So if I hit this, it will toggle it off and now you see that little plus sign right there in the corner. Incidentally, if you have the points at the end of a construction element, don't try to turn them into uh, standard elements because they won't pad. You can't pad an infinitely small point. So we'll toggle that off click on the background, okay? Also then notice the point that's in the middle of the circle right there, same story. I can come over here, I could toggle it off, now there's a plus sign, toggle it back on. So, so you see, same kind of concept going on everywhere. Now if I wanted to, if I didn't like this being a construction element, I can click on it, you see that this is highlighted, click on the background, or excuse me, I'll click on that, you see that it's outlined, there was a reason it stayed on, I'll explain that in a second. So it's on, click on the background, now click on this one up here, and you see the outline just went away because it's telling me that that is a standard element. Now, the reason it doesn't go away when I clicked on the background is because somewhere in the clicking here, I turned it on for normal behavior. So what this means is, if I were to make another circle right now, it will make it as a construction element, okay? So I'll delete that. And then click on the background because this is again one of those things where you really want to make sure you know what you're doing because if I happen to be accidentally clicking on a point and I didn't think about this, I'd not click on the background and I'd turn that off and go, okay, cool, now I want to draw a circle. And then I wonder later, how come my sketch doesn't pad? Because I just turned this point into a standard element. So turn that off. So roundaboutly, I think you just saw what I was going to demonstrate right there is that you, you make sure you click on the background, then you toggle that off, 
and then you can go get your element over here, your, your profile, whatever, and you can draw it out and now it'll be a standard element, all right? That's a lot, that's a lot of conversation on just this topic right here, but I promise this is very, very important and it's also an attempt to avert a lot of common problems that happen in the beginning by people having things uh, that, that have random points that are little plus signs and, and things like that. So to finish this story, I'm gonna pick this, this, and this here, select them all. There's actually selection tools. You can do a paint stroke selection and all kinds of stuff. But anyways, control select, and then I'm gonna turn them all into construction elements, you see? And now I could go about doing my constraints, you know, um, maybe not so theoretically here, I'll just show you. So I could go here, I could say, sure, yeah, that's 45 from there, and then it's so far from here to there. Get that all done, and then now when I exit the sketch workbench, you see it just goes away. You don't even see it in the 3D environment. So now when I go to pad that particular feature, I get just that, okay? That's the kind of stuff that we need to know. We, we create projections, we create projections of things so that we get linked copies to another feature somewhere. We have to know that they're linked because otherwise it might cause us problems. And then we can turn them into construction elements because they're just used as guides to measure off of or anchor things to, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of pad three, delete that and all of its aggregated elements, which would be the sketch that I made it from. And then that plane that we made, I'm gonna get rid of that too. And then we'll get back to this sketch right here. So I'll double click on that. And so just to let you know, see we're on a plane, but it just happens to be on the face. And this is why I, I, I did the plane and showed you it the way that I did, because if I make a projection right now, it's gonna go right here against the face and you're not gonna really get the projecting of the term, you see? So I'll do all the same stuff again for the most part. I'm gonna pick this. Be careful that you don't get the face because see right now I'm on the face. So make sure you get just the line, just the line and that one, okay? And then go to project. Now check this out. See that right there? If I'm thinking ahead, it's not yellow because it's selected, right? It's blue, but I know if I clicked away, it would be yellow, but I don't wanna click away quite yet because the contextual menu just popped up and said, would you like to make that a construction element? Because they know, they know that this is such a common thing. You're probably gonna do this or group or equals, right? Uh, not those so much, but let's let's go to construction element. We'll do that. And so can you kind of see why a lot of people would confuse a construction element with a projection, think that they're both the same thing? Because you do it almost in the same step. We projected it, turned it into a construction element, and now we can continue the rest of our story. So I, uh, I want to make this go right smack into the center here. So I need to draw my little X. I could honestly, I could draw an X from here to here because we have the ability to snap into the center of something as well, but let, let's just roll with this way, right? So I'm gonna pick the line tool right here, but this line, I need it to be a construction element also. So thinking ahead, you'll, you'll screw this up a bunch. You'll go, duh, 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 duh. oh, let's make a line. Oh, crap, I forgot to make a construction element. Well, that's okay, I can just do it right there. Totally fine, right? But if you're thinking ahead, you'll click on the background, right? Click on the background, turn on construction element, then go grab the line tool. Now I can go snap right to that point Make sure you get the circle dot in the center of the circle and then bring it down here, same thing. The projection is anchored to the other object. It cannot move, you can't dimension it, you can't change its shape. So if this line goes from corner point to corner point, it should turn green because it cannot move. If it doesn't turn green, you missed getting on the point, okay? So I'll do that again. Construction element is still on. Like I said, it's a toggle. So I'll pick that here and I'll get that right over to there. Look at that circle right there. That, oh, you see that? It's gonna make a tangency to that. Should we screw this up on purpose? Let me show you one of these accidents that happens. That was just really like, like kind of coincidental. <laughs> uh, so I picked this and I, I, I didn't snap it to the point because if I got it right on top of the point, it'll prefer that one and not the tangency, but this is how you make these accidents. You have that line, you draw it out here, and then you go to move the circle, 
and you're like, wait, what the heck is going on? Why won't you move? What's going on? Uh, and, and it's because of those two little lines right there. It made a tangency in the midst of that just automatically. So I would need to click on that and I could delete that, you see? And then now I can grab the point, I could move it away. So watch out for that. So I'll take my line tool and I'll do this again. I'll get this point right here and then I move it around. Now, now look at this, it's doing it some more. See, see that right there? So these are these automatic constraints that happen. Right now, it's gonna try to lock this line perpendicular to that other line. Now, because this is a square, it's a perfect square, and it's it, it's aiming right at the, the not aiming at, but it's, it's right there in, to, for this point to be perpendicular to that line because of the, the, the squareness of this shape, that has to be the midpoint. So honestly, I could do that. I could just bring it down here and let it do that thing. And then I got my center point, right? But I wanna make it an X just for OCD sake. But what I wanna tell you also is, do you see this thing? You see that change colors right there? And this thing, you can't quite see it because there's so much stuff going on, on the screen right now, but it's auto constraining to all that stuff. And so if you want this to stop, right? So that you don't make that tangency like we just did, what you can do is you can hold down shift. And I believe I might've said this in the other video as well, but you come down here and you hold down shift and now the, the, the constraints will not be made and I can bring it down here closer to this point, but I still have to let go because it won't snap to it. So I'll let go and then hopefully I can get the snap and nothing else. Um, it did create a perpendicularity in there, that's okay. I feel kind of technically that's an over constraint and it should give us an error per the way Katia works, but whatever. So there's there's our task, there's our task. And like I said, we could have ran this line straight down to here and ended and we would have had a nice little point in center, but then I wouldn't have been able to tell you about this next part. If I go over the tops of these and I, and I hover over it, that's a line, this is a line, but there is not a point in the center of this. So I need to get one there. Now, you could maybe find the midpoint. You could totally do that, but this is more of a, a vehicle to explain some different sketch tools. So if you look, here's the point tool, but if you 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 bring the, the drop up window out, I guess I'm gonna keep calling that it, that, uh, you, you, you go here, we've got equidistant points, but oh, look, we have an intersection point. And this will put a point at the intersection of two elements. And that's, that's gonna be perfect for what we want. So the way it works is I click it and we don't have any dialog box. There's nothing going on here. And uh, V5 used to have in the status bar down in the bottom left-hand corner in the gray thin area at the bottom of your window, it would tell you what you're supposed to do. And I guess it's kind of a bummer we don't see that. It did have a little bit in here though, but whatever. So it would say, pick the first line. Okay, so I go pick this first line and then say pick the intersecting line. So then you pick the next one and that's it. We just made a point right where those two intersect, okay? And it's anchored there, so it's not gonna move. So if I take this one and I go make a constraint to that point, it's gonna lock it there and it's gonna stick around. It's not gonna wiggle. So I can do this. I can, I can, I can bring this out like so and it's gonna give us a dimension. But what's important is before you click, before you click to solidify this dimension, right click, and then again in our contextual menu, we'll have coincidence here, and so we can click that and it will snap it right to center. Okay, almost done. So it is stuck in the center, but it's not green because we haven't dimensioned it. We, we haven't uh, given, given it a diameter yet. So I'm gonna pick my constraints, I'm gonna hit this, bring this out, and we'll just say that it's going to be, I think I made it 12 the last time. How big is this cube? Oh, I changed it because of my parameters. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, I'll fix that in a second. It's going to be 12. I'm going to shrink this back down to 100, okay? So it's all green now. It's all locked. It's locked in the center. It's locked with the diameter. We have our X as our construction element. We have our projections here to lock it to this cube shape. So if I do change the size, these things will float along with it, which I'll show you when I change this thing back. Um, and our projections are construction elements. So now I can exit Sketcher 
and I'm going to pocket. So we're gonna use a pocket this time. This is this one right here. We're gonna pocket that shape down two millimeters, just two, just, just a tiny little bit, just to put a little dimple in there that'll be our uh, number one, you see? So let me show you what it's just gonna show you about the uh, um, projections following the, the shape of the cube. So I'll hit my parameter from last time, make it 100, hit enter, the cube shrinks down, um, that looks a lot more now like the circle that would be, um, you know, on a die this size. And then if I go back into the sketch that I used for this pocket, right, the parent, and this is the child of that, right? So I double click on this. We see that our projection is right where we saw it before, even though the cube is um, 100 um, instead of 200, okay? So that's links and projections and construction elements. Okay, so then the final thing that I want to do to this cube right now before, before we're finished, I, I have another thing I want to talk about, but the final thing to do to this is we're going to add a fillet just because it's kind of a good time to, to, to do that, I guess. A, a die, I mean, we could say just drill a hole in it and that would be okay. It makes it easier on the machining time, but you know we want to make it look kind of nice. So we're going to go to an edge fillet down here and we're going to hit this and we'll just make it two. We'll say it's a two millimeter fillet, and that's fine. That could be great, and maybe that's exactly the way we want it. I, th I think I kind of like it this way better, but I also have been doing it this way, where I, I put a tiny little fillet on that edge, tiny, whatever, one millimeter, right? So which, which is better, a little rounded outside there as well, or just a, a sharp edge? You kind of decide what you want to do there. I can tell you that this little edge, but especially, I don't know, these little edges right here are going to add quite a bit of extra effort to the machining time of this uh, product. So then to wrap this all up, I want to finish with the geometrical and dimensional constraints that I told you about. I think you probably already get what they are, but I want to state it very clearly. And um, I would also like to talk about a, uh, an, an analysis tool to help you with problems, okay? So let's, 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 go, back to, let's go back to this sketch here, just to, to show you this. This is just terminology, okay? So this way the heck over here, um, that was because we resized it, um, that's a dimension. Of course it's a dimension. So that is a dimensional constraint. That's a dimensional constraint you see down here. And here is uh, all the other things, the little circles, that little square corner right there. Those are geometrical constraints. And, and they hang out down here. And this is a toggle to turn the creation, the automatic creation of those off and on. I'm going to show you how that works. It may or may not be of major importance to you, and I don't know if I would say that I ever really turn them off. I leave them on all the time. It's kind of nice, though, to know that they're there. I can spin that out a little bit more. There's a lot of Katia tools that I know that I could tell you I never use, and, and when I express that, that, that kind of makes it sound like they're dumb and you should never use them, but that's absolutely not what I'm saying. In my life, what I do, I don't use them very frequently, but this being a very creative, you know, how do I get this thing done kind of process. You're When you're faced with a new type of product, it's nice to have 50 different ways in your mental tool bag on how to do a thing. Even though, you know, you don't use it very frequently, you go, you know what? That damn keyhole tool might be a good thing to use now. So uh, anyways, here is, um, again, what they are. Dimensions are numbers. And geometrical constraints are all of the little circles and the, the angles and things you see here. So I'm going to make a rectangle right here, and it's kind of off kilter. Here, you know what? Let me flatten this out. So I'll make a, a rectangle right here, and it's a construction element. I'll turn it off so it makes it easier to see. I made the rectangle, and it automatically added horizontals and verticals here. You see? That's what this toggle did. The geometrical constraints toggle made those. So if I were to come here and turn them off, so that toggle, it's now off. I uh, kind of don't really like this dropout thing here because it's hard to just glance down and see if they're all on or off. You could probably put them somewhere else in an action bar or your own section, I guess. 
So I go and I make another rectangle. And now that it's off, I don't get them. So is that helpful? Well, what does it do? Well, if I, if I go like this and I grab the point and I try to move it, I'm grabbing the point. It should tip in, but it won't let me because this is locked at horizontal and this is locked at vertical. If I grab this, yeah, it moves. But that's why I'm grabbing the point because I'm trying to tip it over. It won't do it. How about this one? I grab that point and boop, it just tips it right in. So that could be a really good reason for just temporary tur temporarily turning it off. So you could just do that, right? So great, seems valid. I've actually have a textbook where they specifically tell you to do this. I think as a matter of fact, they go in the, in the course of deleting or showing you about constraints, they go, hey, look, you can just delete them and then you can do it, right? Well, in real life, we have this nice little profile tool over here that you just go, oh, <laughs> skip that, <laughs> don't do that. That's, that's, that's the advanced feature. So you go here, I click here, and if I want, I could lock it horizontal, I could lock it or vertical and horizontal, and then I could just come in here and I could just draw it. So I don't, I don't think that that was valid here the way that we did it to come down here to turn that off just so I could make that shape. Not really sure, but that's how it works. Now let me let me show you a little bit more about that. What, why is this thing thinking? Okay, there we go. So now let's turn it back on, and um, we'll go here. And we see that they added them back, but, but there's also this other one that's dimensional constraints. So I told you that dimensions are dimensional constraints and, and the little circle dots and slashes, those are geometrical constraints. But these things are about the automatic creation of these. So do you see any automatically created numbers? They're, they're, they're not here. So it's because the rectangle doesn't have it, but there is some other features that automatically have it on here. So if I go over here, I've got, I've got our corner tool, I've got our chamfer tool. Let me grab the chamfer tool. What I do is I can either grab the point or I can pick one line and then I pick another line and it's gonna drag a corner in, okay? So I click it and look what happens. So that, that's it, it I, I drag it in, I click and then it drops out a measurement and an angle. That's a dimensional constraint. So let me do it again, except this time I'll come here and I'll turn off dimensional constraints and I'll grab my chamfer, I'll come over to this side and this side, I'll drag it in, click and nothing, you see? So that's what those do. That's the buttons, that's the concept, okay? Ho horizontal, vertical, coincidence, symmetry, mirroring, you know, those kinds of things. Those are all geometrical constraints and anything with a number or an angle, whatever, that's, that's our dimensional constraints. So then the last thing on my hit list is something that I'd maybe say I don't use very frequently, but it's really helpful if you're kind of new to this and you're prone to making some mistakes here and there with your sketches. So let me show you. So I'm gonna make a sketch on that plane because who cares, it's, it's not relevant. I'm just making a sketch here and I'm gonna make some shapes. I'm gonna make a little rectangle here and I'll put a, a circle inside of it. This is a multi-domain sketch, they call this, and this is kind of a no-no, but I'm just, just what the heck, we'll talk about that later. And so then um, I'm clicking around, I happen to be clicking right on that center point for whatever reason, not thinking about it, and so I go, oh yeah, I wanna make a line up here, I wanna make a square that's a construction square, construction element, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit that, and uh, then I'm gonna go make my construction square. Wait, it's not a construction square. Let me, let me turn that off. Oh, I guess I didn't click it. Hmm, that's weird. So I'll click it and then I'll make myself a construction square. And there you go, right? So did you see what I did, by the way? So having that selected, it turned it into, a, you know, put a point as a standard element. And, uh, and so let me show you. So I, I exit out of here and I say, okay, great. I want to extrude all this. I want to pad it. And then I get an error, feature definition error. Now, if you actually care to read the error, in this particular case, it actually kind of tells you exactly what's wrong. The selected sketch contains points defined as standard geometrical elements. You must convert these points into construction elements. Do you want to use the sketch anyways? No, but see, you probably wouldn't have known what standard geometric would mean necessarily if, if we didn't talk about this already. So I say no, and then let's let's pretend. I, I did not know what the heck that was. So I go back into my sketch and I start looking around. I'm looking, 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 and I'm like, I, I, I don't know, everything seems to look fine to me. What the heck is the problem? 
So what you can do is you can go to analysis here and there is sketch analysis. This is one of my favorite tools for helping people figure out what the problems are. You pick this and it, it pops up this dialog box that will tell you uh, not just what's wrong, because sometimes you have to figure out still what's wrong, but you just have to know that your sketches, they're not supposed to be like an open C shape or something. They're all supposed to be what we'd call watertight. They're supposed to be enclosed completely. So we look, we got circle one, I can click on it and it shows us here and it highlights there. I'm like, oh, that's nice. This, this little window pop-up is new, by the way, with 3D experience. Implicit profile, what's that? Oh, that's closed also, that's, that's that square. Apparently they call that an implicit profile, okay. Hmm. Then what's this thing on here? 0.5, isolated, warning, warning. This point is not in construction. Oh, that's right, that's right. Those points are not supposed to be in construction or not supposed to be in standard mode. I should, I should fix that, right? So what I can do is I can close this down and I can turn that into a construction element or I can just, uh, I can just select it and then I can come down here and I could erase it. I could, if it was a C shape, I could close it or I could come here, I could say, Go ahead and just put it in a construction mode and then watch what happens. I hit it and it just goes away because now it's all nice and it's it's not a profile anymore and it's part of that circle one. So that solved our problem. While we're here, let me show you the rest of this. Maybe you might have a projection problem. Maybe there was something that was a projection of something else, but you deleted that something, right? What would happen if we deleted this cube, right? Our projection that we had on our circle that made this little you know uh, dimple in here that, that would have problems. We'd have some errors here. And so when you got the warning about it and you're going, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong here, you can go to use edges and your projections are called use edges. They would be in here. You could also go to diagnostic, but this might not be super handy. This is everything. You know, every line has got a couple points at the ends of it. Here's your parallelisms. These are all of your, like a horizontal is technically parallel to the horizontal axes, right? And here's another one. And there's your vertical one parallel to the vertical axes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So um, that's a really great tool to see what is going on. But I want to quickly come out here, I'm gonna get rid of that sketch. Oh, I guess I should show you that, yeah, now, now it'll work, right? Now I can pad that thing up, no problem, um, right? Because we fixed our issue. Why don't we go ahead and get rid of that and then go back to this one here, the sketch that made that, just so I could show you uh, under analysis, again, back to sketch tools, one circle closed, right? Go to use edges, and there's our projection. Projection one, projection two, three, four, et cetera, okay? So you can see that. You can also see that uh, down here, underneath use edges in the tree. So if you're having a problem, you could come here and delete it here, you could delete it here. Of course you could delete it right here, but sometimes you can't see it because sometimes you got a line over the top of a line over the top of a line. That becomes an issue as well. And diagnostics might maybe be able to, to help you with some of that as well. But usually it's in these first two tabs. So with that, I will go ahead and get out of here and call this video done. This is a lot, as usual, of conversation on a very seemingly small thing, but it will help you out in the future greatly. Our goal is not to make a die. Our goal is to talk about a lot of stuff along the way as we make this. Coming up in the next video, we are gonna talk about how to get the rest of the numbers on here and again, you know, not just going to grab it and go. We're going to talk about things like, should we just make a whole bunch of sketches? Should we make one sketch and could we copy and paste it somewhere? Or could we just, you know, somehow automate the process? So we'll take a look at that also.